Welcome to the 3 a.m. lowdown. We got news, views, reviews. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, you spooky, naughty, beautiful people out there. I'm going to have my face in the corner of these screens a little bit. I might get a gorilla mask rubber with the fur attached and wear a top hat, but probably muffle my voice. It's just a thought. Okay, first story. It's from unexplainedmysteries.com. Fisherman catches bizarre baby dragonfish. This is from April 10th. I got a picture of it there. I got a larger picture for you. See, I'm a nice dude. Well, you can go to the link anyway. The unusual looking specimen was recently fished up in the Norwegian Sea by fisherman Roman Fedorsov. <laughs> Sporting large cartoon eyes, a pointy snout, lizard like fins, and a long tail. This remarkable sea creature is in is the latest in a series of unusual discoveries shared on Fedortsov's Instagram page. Unsurprisingly, since being posted online, the image has attracted a large number of comments from social media users speculating over what type of creature it could be. Many agreed that it looked like a baby dragon from the area of fiction. According to Associate Professor Ian Tibbetts from the Queensland University School of Biological Science, however, this intriguing specimen does at least have a conventional explanation. Well, it's one of God's creatures on Earth. It's not newly discovered, so. It is, in fact, what is known as a chimera, or sometimes a ghost shark or ratfish. <laughs> what a lovely name. They fly through the water using their large pectoral fins, and they generally live in the deep sea, below 200 millimeters, meters, I mean, uh, 600 feet about, he told Yahoo News. This one, however, does not appear to be too healthy. He looks slightly dead, <laughs> said Dibbets. I imagine it came up in a deep water trawl or a research vessel. All right, one more large picture of the dude. Yeah, it looks kind of... Well, it's got triangles in its eyes. That's weird. All right, let's get on to the next story for tonight. We got some weird, naughty ones for you. All right, this one you might have seen this week, the last few days. It's from April 9th. And, uh, I don't know, I, I want to read these uh, blithering idiot experts, the people in the white lab coats that push the psychological nonsense on you. I want to see what they have to say about it. Okay, aerial anomaly over Alaska sparks UFO speculation. And I've got a larger picture for you. Let me just... Uh, now, that is some strange stuff, and we've all probably seen this stuff. You know, looked at pictures and looked at UFO stuff, and this is freaking strange, man. All right, let me get back to the article. All right. Residents took to social media to share photographs of an anomalous cloud-like trail over Lazy Mountain. <laughs> Lazy Mountain. Resembling a long spiraling shaft <laughs> of cloud or the plume from some sort of rocket, the phenomenon was first sighted by locals Thursday morning at around 7 a.m. Nice thing to wake up to. When photographs started appearing online, a social media users were left speculating over what it could have been. Theories include a UFO, a satellite and a new way a volcanic eruption, uh, uh, even a missile connected to the current conflict in Ukraine. Probably harp. 
out there in Alaska. So numerous were the reports that Alaska State Troopers and Alaska Rescue Coordination Center began coordinating a potential rescue operation in the event that there had been a plane crash. A rescue helicopter, which flew over the region, however, reported finding nothing on the ground. There had been no reports of overdue aircraft or ELT activations, whatever that is, an aircraft crash, Alaska State Troopers stated in a news release. An investigation later indicated that the phenomenon could have been the contrail of an airplane. Here we go, the experts. Further investigation revealed that a large commercial jet was flying in that area around the time that the photos and video were taken. What the hell were they spraying in this case? Troopers believed that the photos and video showed a contrail from a commercial jet combined with the rising sun. These are the experts, man. Psychological delusion. Which together caused a unique atmospheric sight. Yeah. Well, the links are there. You check it out. I, I think this is a total nonsense description of what happened. It looks very strange. All right, let's move on. All right, this is a UFO sighting filmed over Hong Kong, China, on the 7th of April. All right, China, it's probably some kind of surveillance craft. Excuse me, pronunciation is not too good sometimes. But it's a video, and we're, through the magic of computers, we're going to have a video in it, within a video. And I did get to the good part to start, so let's get to it. Let me make this full screen. Okay, and then we play this. Vanishes, poof, and it comes back. No way to All right, I'm gonna cut. You can watch the full video if you wish. Let me get out of full screen here. All right, that's the UFO for this video. For this video within a video. Isn't that wonderful? All right, I don't know. Looks like an orb. Could be anything. Reveal. All right, this one I want to cover quick, quickly. I put the trailer up for this movie before this video. Wormwood, the apocalypse. It looks good. Man, I like the horror movie scary stuff. Hopefully their effects aren't CGI. They use some real effects. And Wormwood Apocalypse, it's coming on Video On Demand, April 14th. Look out for it, because I, I'm going to look out for it. Let me just read the paragraph here. This is from UpcomingHorrorMovies.com. Easy <laughs> name to know. All right, this sequel picks up in the action of a zombie-infested Australian wasteland where Soldier Rise has dedicated his life to tracking and capturing survivors for the Surgeon General in hope of finding a cure. The Surgeon General probably did it. When he learns all is not as it seems, he must team up with Maxie and siblings Brooke and Barry to race against the clock and save the one person who may be the key to ending the apocalypse. It looks like good stuff. I'm going to start doing this, but I'm going to start doing the other stuff, all right? I'm going to post trailers of upcoming stuff. Hopefully, I can get some reviews in. If you like that sort of thing, stick around. If you don't, I well, I'm going to post the other nonsense as well. All right, next story. Looks like a good movie. I'm going to enjoy it. All right, naughty story. We <laughs> got one about dues this week. Not about the woman's vagina. All right, this is from The Sun. It's a UK. All right. Zap it. Men's premature ejaculation cured if the doc zap his penis with electrical current. All right, my junk has shriveled up into my body cavity reading this article, so be aware. <laughs> Premature ejaculation can be distressing for those who suffer it <laughs> and their sexual partners. 
but scientists may have discovered a way to cure the ailment through the use of electrical currents. Wonderful. Oh, boy, we have a nice picture. Let me see if I can open that picture in a new tab and go into it a little bit more so we can be spooky scary. Oh, boy, isn't anatomy wonderful? Oh, two electrodes attached to the penis, and they, the electrical current cavities, so the prostate, I know the testicles, and they even have the anal cavity there. That's wonderful. Let me get away from that dang picture. All right, I'm not going to read about the diagram. Pre premature ejaculation or erectile dysfunction impacts millions of men worldwide and is very common. Common treatment options include behavioral techniques, topical anesthetics, whatever that is, counseling or medication. Meditation. Medication. You know, I, I, I don't understand dudes out there because, you know, when you pump, you pump, man. You know, you come up to that point, I, I don't understand, I, 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 and I don't want to understand, really. <laughs> Everything's working for me. A doctor may order blood tests to check the levels of testosterone, and you may be referred to a urologist or sexual dysfunction, a specialist, yes, a person in a lab coat. But this treatment could be an alternative option and involves electrodes being stuck onto the penis for 30 minutes, for three sessions a week. <laughs> Wonderful torture for three times a week. Writing in the Asian Journal of Urology, experts revealed that one man who underwent the therapy was able to last seven times longer in bed than before. The 28-year-old man was treated in Lebanon for six months after trying different drugs to help with his condition. The expert said the man had been in a relationship with his girlfriend for a year and would usually ejaculate after 40 seconds. Yeah, it's quick on the trigger. After the course of treatment, he was able to have intercourse for five minutes before climaxing. Isn't that nice, ladies? Five minutes. Oh, boy. That sounds good, ladies. As part of the treatment, a nerve stimulator machine is used, which is then attached to the penis shaft. <laughs> One service electrode is placed on the base of the shaft with the other two centimeters up. The machine disrupts the nerve response that is needed for muscles to contract, which would result in ejaculation. Yeah, mm, orgasm for a dude pumping the... Uh, over the course of the treatment period, the man was exposed to electrical currents. Before the treatment course, he had to measure the time from vaginal, <laughs> vaginal penetration to ejaculation, which was 40 seconds. And there were people watching them. That's wonderful. By the end of the treatment plan, this was around 3 minutes and 54 seconds. Once he stopped using the device, once he stopped using it, baby, it continued to improve his sex life. 14 months after the treatment, it was taking him 5 minutes and 14 seconds to reach climax. Uh, that was a record, pretty much. Medics did not state the treatment was painless, but said they can, it, they can be used without discomfort. However, they did explain that it is not yet fully understood why these electrical currents help with premature ejaculation. So someone just thought this up. They stated that they believe believe stimulating the dorsal nerve interferes with the muscles that contract when a man is about to ejaculate. They added that more studies need to be done, yes, torture more people, to determine whether or not this therapy can be used as a drug-free treatment for those experiencing premature ejaculation. According to the NHS, a number of psychological and physical factors can cause premature ejaculation. Physical reasons include the old prostate problems, thyroid problems, and recreational <laughs> drugs. Meanwhile, psychological problems include depression, stress, relationship problems, or anxiety about sexual performance. All right, there's our naughty article for the week, and like I said, my junk has shrunk into my body cavity. All right, next story for this evening. All right, this is from The Sun. 
So it is another article. I thought I'd use it to balance it out. Double head on the naughty stuff. And this is about women this time. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Mind over matter. Women who can't have sex trains herself to spontaneously orgasm in minutes. Hopefully she doesn't do that on the elevator. Achieving an orgasm can be difficult for many women, but it's even harder if you can't actually have sex. Yet a new case reported has highlighted how one woman has, with a rare condition trained herself to spontaneously orgasm in minutes. The 30-year-old suffered from, I uh, pronounced this, let's hear it. Good, baby. Vaginismus. Say it again. Vaginismus. One more time. Vaginismus. Yeah, baby. Vaginismus, a condition where the muscles in the vagina involuntarily tighten whenever penetration is attempted. This can include traditional sex or when using a sex toy. Even using tampons or a visit to the gynecologist can leave sufferers in agony. Vaginismus can completely disrupt a woman's sex life and cause her to lose all confidence in the bedroom. What happened to the clitoris in this, uh, this equation here? Why does there have to be penetration involved? You know, the clitoris has worked for me in the past. However, the condition doesn't always mean that women are unable to experience pleasure. The woman in the case re report decided that she wanted to reach the magic O. Magic O. And practiced tantric yoga, which is a spiritual, sensual form of sex, for 10 years. Following this, she was able to achieve orgasm when she wanted, with just her mind, 10 fucking years. The case reported, published in Sex Medicine, also stated that the woman was able to control her orgasm for up to 10 minutes. Okay. As part of her training, the woman learned body postures, breathing techniques, and body locks that she said helped her to learn how to awaken a sense of sexual energy. She, I did pelvic thrust floor exercise. I added the thrust. Breast massage practice and practices to release shame and guilt. Shame and guilt over having an orgasm. I learned to relax and let go, accept body image, and brought increased mindfulness also to daily life in general. The woman stated that her sexual pleasure had not been her initial goal. <laughs> yes, it was. That as her training progressed, this became more apparent. Due to her expense, ex expensive and extensive training, she was able to orgasm, but also overcame her vaginismus. I'm not going back to that and was able to put herself in a continuous orgasmic state almost instantly and have it last for a long period of time. Wow, this is mind over matter, man. Researchers tested the woman and asked her to pay, partake in 10 and 5 minutes of continuous orgasm, and as a control, she had to read a book for 10 minutes. <laughs> was it porn? The researchers were able to identify when she reached orgasm due to prolactin. This is a hormone which is produced by the pituitary gland in the brain. Okay. It is used as a marker as it spikes when someone has an orgasm. Researchers tested her blood before and after the experience and noticed that her prolactin levels shot up by 25%. Five minutes after she had an orgasm achieved by no genital touching. That's not fun. These levels also soared 48% ten minutes after she had an orgasm achieved by no general genitalia touching. In comparison, book reading caused no change to her prolactin levels. However, the researchers noted that the woman used touch to achieve orgasm. She lost the feeling of intimacy. While this had an extra level of feeling, they said, 
It does not equate to a better sensation. I don't know, orgasm without some play, you know, some touching feeling is not what it's all about. Okay, that wraps up episode four, and there will be more to come. You know, thank you for watching. I'm going to still put out the nonsense videos here and there because it shows the human condition. I haven't done a clown show video in a while. It takes a, actually a lot of work, man. I'll figure I'll do these. I get some more enjoyment out of it. I get to talk. All right. You know, my blessings, my love to you and family and your pets, of course, and your dear ones. Thanks for watching. You are appreciated here always. Back. Share and subscribe, please. It helps out a lot. Thank you.